simple or as difficult as you want to make it. Basically, going right from simple, all you need a empty bucket. They're all full. <laughs> <laughs> full. Damn. Full of rubbish. And a kit. Away you go. And some yes. Simple. But the key thing is, obviously home brewing was very big in the 70s and the 80s. You'll remember up there. <laughs> 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 what, do you, what do you think is... I'm, I'm a bit annoyed of, actually standing under here. You're probably you probably get a lot of... You're probably getting a lot of... Yeah, that's next year. Right? <laughs> um, you probably obviously a lot of stigma you've heard, home brew taste, things like that. Obviously two major factors in that situation. Chlorinated water, one, and fermented as high a temperature as you could possibly get, i.e. in the cupboard. So that's, yes. And there is another factor as well, there on that. It's 70s, 80s, I did find out that many of the homebrew manufacturers was actually stuffing the kits with barley sugar and crap and shark. Ah, right, okay. Yeah. So yeah, again. Forcing the alcohol content with normal sugar, Yeah. Uh, which was giving the kits so a bad name. I don't know how how many of you have tried either made a homebrew kit yourselves or tried somebody else's where all you can taste or smell is TCP. Primarily, that is down to the chlorine in the water reacting with the mop. So, key thing number one, if I was going to say to you, right, you want to do some home brewing. First key point, always, always treat your water. Even if it's just half a Canton tablet to kill the chlorine. The difference is night and day. Absolutely night and day. Second thing, which we touched on a moment ago there, temperature. Temperature control. Don't necessarily have it micromanaged, so, you know, 20 degrees spot on, plus or minus a tenth of a degree. 20 to 22, just don't do what our parents did. Or what we, we did when room. you were 17 or 18, Carl, and, <laughs> <laughs> and stick it in the air cup because all you'll get is the hot alcohol taste and not very nice at all. So, basically, kits, want to make your own beer, you haven't got much equipment, bin, all you need. The middle stage, which kind of touches on what Pete does, and I know Carl does, is brewing a bag, which is basically using a stock pot, a 10 litre stock pot, or maybe even more, if you can find them, they're, they're available on eBay, and doing a mash, so where you convert the malt, which is already done in a kit, converting the malt, or the start, oh, I can't remember now, in the malt to sugar, ready to ferment. Easy, but one downside is, obviously, small batches. Unless you've got a 50 litre stainless steel <laughs> container and a burner. So, oh, one of my 60 litre converted... Or, yes, which I do, which is, I do full batches in one of Carl's 60 litre fermenters there. Commission on it to work there. <laughs> Basically, two holes cut in, or three holes cut in, in fact. Two of these. In fact, I bet this one would be, because I would suspect. Oh, this has got an exposed element. Good. So, two value kettles that's got exposed an exposed element. And obviously the third hole is for your drainage, to, to drain out. It's as easy or as difficult as you want to make it in terms of, if you found a beer that you like, use the internet. There's a wealth of forums, just like ones at home, but for beer making. Go on there. You can guarantee nine times out of ten, if there's a beer that you like, somebody would have had a go at trying to make a clone of it. Guarantee. 
that's it. Not very good talk, I know, but unfortunately, I'm still feeling a little bit delicate after last night. I have got some of my beer here. All of these, all three of these beers are full mash, all great. So you've got one in the middle which is labelled, which is Get Knotted, which is based on an American beer called Diamond Knot IPA. There's the fabled Summer Ale, which I first obviously came here in 2009 and bought this with me and unfortunately I corrupted quite a few of the guys who had never even thought about making beer into no, making beer. <laughs> And lastly, a new one actually, this is Kentish-ish. It's basically my take on a traditional Kentish ale. So be interested to see what you think. Do we get a drink in there? Yeah. Brilliant. Cheers, okay.